Hey YouTube, welcome to another episode of Making a Giant. Today's interview, our guest is Stephanie Adu from ACJ Luxury Maintenance Services. If you missed the episode with Stephanie, we interviewed her earlier this month, actually last month now that I look about it. We interviewed her and where she was on a panelist with Sheena Parker, also fellow janitorial company and military veteran. Take a listen to our episode with Stephanie as she discusses her amazing feat from going from daycare center owner to janitorial contractor doing work now at different hospitals and other facilities around the country. Enjoy this episode. Make sure to reach out to Stephanie. Tell her how much you enjoyed it. She is smart. She's bright. She's been an entrepreneur. She's a mom. She's a wife. She's all that plus more. Stay tuned. Enjoy the episode. Leave in the comments what you learned from this episode. Tag a particular section so that we can share the greatness with other people. Thanks for watching. Enjoy Stephanie and Maria today. Today on our show, we have Stephanie, Stephanie Addo out of New Jersey, and she's actually the owner of ACJ Luxury Maintenance. Um, for those in our community are very aware of who she is and everything she has accomplished, because like she says, she's a newbie, but I was just telling her, how can she be a newbie with everything she has done? So she took this game and used it all up because she's done great, great things. So Stephanie, I just wanted to say thank you and welcome. Thank you guys so much for having me on the podcast. This is so full circle <laughs> for me. So I'm so excited. That's good. And that's why now it's even better because the people that are coming on are people that phone calls I took initially are people that I like the first virtual meet and greets and things like right, that. So right. it's very exciting to see that you guys have surpassed a lot of your own goals, my goals, especially because you guys are doing great. So um, Stephanie, just tell us a little bit about who you are, your company and what you do. Sure. So um, my name is Stephanie, owner of ACJ Luxury Maintenance. We are a janitorial facility maintenance company that serves the government sector and also the commercial sector. And I'm a mom, a mom of three <laughs> and a wife. <laughs> so oh, wow. that's me in a nutshell. <laughs> oh, wow. So you stay busy. Yes, I do. Yes. Uh, and you're up in the Jersey area. So I am. I am. My company services New Jersey and also New York area. Oh, wow. So it's big city stuff yes. over there. And especially yeah. with everything that happened with COVID, I can't imagine how much busier everything's gotten. Absolutely. Absolutely. It definitely did. So Stephanie, just take us back. I know you're in Jersey right now. Did you grow up in Jersey? <laughs> A whole other. <laughs> so I want to say yeah, yes and no, right? So my life kind of started in Jersey. I was um, I was born in New York, but my parents lived in Jersey. When they split up when I was four, and I was in Irvington, New Jersey, we moved with my grandparents back in the Bronx. So I was there until three years ago, three four years ago, and then I came back to Jersey. <laughs> So I think of myself more as a New Yorker, just because that, you know, that's what raised me. The Bronx. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, I'm more like a New Yorker. Yeah, especially the Jersey. Bronx. It's not yeah. like you were in the suburbs of New York. You were in the Bronx. <laughs> yeah, no, I was in the Bronx. <laughs> when people hear the Bronx or people say New York, they automatically think of the big birds, like Bronx. Yeah, 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 they do. The Fire Barrel. That, that's me. Bronx, <laughs> Awesome. Okay. So growing up in New York, um, you, the teacher in me always likes to ask, because I ask them when they're five, and what did you want to be when you grew up? <laughs> Which was so funny when you told me you were going to ask. I was like, ah. I actually, um, I was supposed to be a teacher. <laughs> <laughs> did you know what kind of teacher? Um, in the beginning, I did. Well, all right. So a little background. Background is that I did want to work with little children. So like through high school, I volunteered. I volunteered at daycares, X, Y, Z. And that helped me realize that I did not want to work with little kids. <laughs> so I ended up going towards being a math teacher. And that's what I, I wanted to be a high school math teacher. Oh. That, that was supposed to be my goal. So you're good with numbers? Yes, I'm pretty good with numbers. Okay, yep. <laughs> I, I, I'm bad with numbers. 
Yeah, I, I can't. I can't with my fingers, and I say I teach kindergarten. We only go up to twenty, so <laughs> anything beyond my fingers and my toes, I am not doing it. Yeah, no, I love percentages. I, I love figuring things out. I just okay. like all of that stuff. Like oh, that's okay, me. you're that critical thinker. Like, how am I going to figure out how does this make sense? Right, right. Which works for me, and then it doesn't because then it's some stuff I make so much harder. <laughs> Than it needs to be. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, okay. So you went all through high school thinking you wanted to be a teacher. Did you go to college or university right after? I did. I kind of did both. I joined the military. I was in the Army Reserve. So I joined the Army at 17. I was wow. in like the delayed entry program. Why the, and, why, why the why, Army? Why the military in general at that age, young age wanting to just be in the military? It's weird. Like, it's just one of those things that kind of always drew me to it. Like, I was like, oh, I wonder if I could do basic training, you know, just young and dumb. But it was one of the best decisions I ever made off the whim. But, you know, I just wanted my my grandfather was in the army. I had a, um, a cousin that was in the Marines. So it just seemed like, you know, they were fine. Let me check it out and see how it worked for me. And I ended up joining the army um, when I first started college. And but I was going to college mm-hmm. for teaching. So it's one oh. of those things I did simultaneously. What was your MOS in the army? 92 Alpha. Um, Which- it was logistics. So okay. warehouse logistics, kind of what I'm doing now, but a little different. Oh. Ironically, my husband is in logistics, like, and he's never <laughs> been in the military. So. <laughs> Uh, he is in logistics. That's his full time job. But so you might uh, understand his mindset and why he has good days and why he has bad days. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So it's just kind of, it's so funny. It works out. When did you make the switch from education? I know when I did it. I went in as an education major and I made that switch just like mm-hmm. you. I went into a classroom and I was like, oh no. Mm-mm. Yeah, why not? Nah, they're saying it. So I made the switch. It's so hard to explain it. After I had my son, I opened You were the in college? No, I wasn't. Um, I had my son. I dropped you... out of college. Oh, okay. <laughs> I dropped out for many, many years. Like, I I just graduated this year. Oh, congrats. <laughs> <laughs> so many, many years. But after I had my son, I, um, you know, because I wanted to get into teaching, I was trying to work at a daycare so I could watch him. And then um, be with him at the same time. I'm one of those overprotective parents. And it's a first time kid. So you're like, ah. So once I realized they weren't going to pay me enough for my experience, because I had a lot of experience by that time, I looked online and I saw that I didn't need a degree to open a home daycare. Okay. <laughs> so I ended up opening a home daycare. And once I'm in that daycare, I realized for sure that I don't, um, I want to have a, uh, I wanted to do the daycare, but I didn't want to be the teacher. I like the administration side. That's what kind of put me into business. Like I love, that's what triggered my love for business. And I said, okay, I want to learn more about that. Um, So that's how I switched from education more to business. So you enjoyed running the daycare, the fact that you have something. and the infrastructure. Yeah, all of that stuff. But as far as sitting down saying, hey, this is the color red and this is the color blue. Like, no, nah, that wasn't, that wasn't me at all. It's still not me being a mom. My husband does so Oh, look at him. So <laughs> That's awesome me. to hear though, just as the teacher part of me. It's like uh, the fact that if you don't do it, somebody else does. Yeah, because yeah. Because it's basic skills. That's what I was telling everyone. The kids are lacking basic skills these days. Very much so. Very so, much so. And 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 Eric and I were talking and he said like, okay, being that you have a different view of life, because when I told them I was doing YouTube, they were so excited. I want to mm-hmm. show them things that they don't see. The, the Absolutely. YouTuber, the entrepreneur, the people that look like us that are on YouTube or are making it have businesses. So they have that idea in their head at five years old that they don't have to have that cookie cutter life or that cookie yes. cutter job of you go to school, you become a teacher, you become this and that, and that's all there is. Yeah. Yeah. I, and it's, it's funny you say that because like my kids, since they've been born, I've only owned a business. So they've never seen me 
work or whatever. So in their mind, they're going to own the business. You know? Yeah, they don't talk they, about working, right? Yeah, that's all they know. And in turn, my niece and my nephew, like my niece, like I want to go to work at McDonald's. I'm like, what? I'm like, no, absolutely <laughs> not. Because we grew up seeing mom go to work, dad go right. to work, nine mm-hmm. to five or three to whatever schedule. So that's really good that you are showing them there's other ways, and that's their normal. That's right. their, it's normal. their normal. It's their normal. So, so <laughs> how long did you have the daycare for? Uh, approximately eight years. Then it was it was just time to move on. You know, it was just one of those things where it, I am. And if you look at my LinkedIn, it says I'm a serial entrepreneur. <laughs> so it was really one of those things to look to move on. Mm-hmm. And even with wanting with the, having the daycare, I always wanted to do government contracts, and I just didn't know how to get in I didn't how, know anything about getting how in. did you know it existed well everybody would say you have to get this certification and you have to get that certification then you have to sign up with Duns, and you have to you know you have to do all of that but stuff. where did you know like I had no idea this existed I didn't even oh, know. Like, so mm-hmm. how did you know about it networking when I would meet other entrepreneurs uh-huh. and they'd say, I have a contract with the state or I have a contract with Department of Education. Mm-hmm. I have a contract, you know, one lady I met with, like I sat down and met with her. She was teaching toilet training to children on the spectrum. She was teaching the parents how to potty train their child on the spectrum because my oldest son is on the spectrum. Mm -hmm. and I sat down and I wanted to know how did you get that contract like what was that about who did you speak to and then she's the one that told me a lot about government contracting this is how you get in and this is you know what you do but it sort of seemed like how do I how do I put it it kind of went in one ear and out the other because I just thought I wasn't qualified I thought that I you know just one of those things where I felt like it wasn't attainable in the okay. area that I was in, you know, but having daycare and all that stuff, I felt like it wasn't a team. When you were going to, we're about to make that switch from the daycare to knowing that you wanted a new business and you wanted to go into government contracting. Did you know, you said you, you knew that it wasn't attainable in your space. Did you have an idea of what other space you would go into? I didn't until I started going to these um, IVMF meetings and that's the Institute for Veteran Military Families. They help. Uh, different veterans with their businesses, entrepreneurship, all of that stuff. So they had conferences and I started meeting a lot of women, a lot of black women that were in construction. (laughs) And I was just like blown away. Like, how do I get in construction? (laughs) You know, what is this? And um, one of my friends who I've connected with, she, she was the one that really helped me. Her name is Sheena. She's the one that helped me really understand that this was very attainable to be able to get into the construction facility maintenance space. You may not know how to break down a building, but you do know how to clean a building. You know how to obtain, you know, um, you know how to probably paint, you know how to do fun. So like little things like that, Mm -hmm. the one that showed me that it is kind of attainable, especially after she got her first contract, I was like, oh, and she got it for Florence. So I was like, oh my goodness, I could do this, (laughs) you know? And that's what kind of drew me into it. Okay, because because you saw so many people in construction, so you got geared towards that way. Absolutely. But then she showed you that construction is not building a building, is not breaking right. down, is not it's, things that mm-hmm. we do, like I've done before. Like yeah. there's other aspects of it. Other aspects. And I, I didn't know that because a lot of the times we're really one track minded, like we're on that, you know, if you say construction, you think one thing. And she's the one that really helped me to understand in when she got her contract, I asked her, let's just like I sat down with the other lady and mm-hmm. she was like, you need to watch Eric. So <laughs> I, <laughs> I started binging on Eric and this is why it's so um, full circle. Like I literally watched Eric for like two years before I made the jump, you know. What year was this now? <sighs> so we're in 2021, uh, about 2018, I started watching Eric. Okay. Yeah. Off and on, off and on, just binging and uh-huh. going through this stuff in 2019 think, okay. I took it serious okay in 2019 yeah. when you decided to take it serious um what was the first thing you did um the same thing I was doing today which is which is funny you'll laugh but since September is coming around well it is here today um it's one of those times where the government agencies need to get rid of contracts right so I was looking up my I was redoing my target market list 
I was going over how to do the forecast list again. So you had already done, you had already taken steps, so it's not like you yes. took it seriously because apparently while you were binging that first year, right. you were still right. doing little tasks. I was doing those put. little tasks that he put together. My kids, this is how much I watch it. My kids know <laughs> because <laughs> I'd wake up and put it on my put on the YouTube on my smart TV and sit down, eat my breakfast, watch it, and take my notes and then implement. That's what I would do. Okay. Yeah. So you already had your all registrations. You had already Absolutely. picked a, your business name. You knew yep. you were going to go this direction. And this is what I'm going to do next. Absolutely. Absolutely. So 2019 came and. 2019 came by September. I started my, my cleaning company. That's what it was supposed to be. Started in the cleaning industry. It was not ACJ Luxury Maintenance at the time. It was Short Hills Luxury Cleaning. And I started out with that because that's where I was living at. I was living in that area. So I said, mm-hmm. okay, let me start out with that. And I um, wanted to build up my finances. So we were doing residential. We were also doing rental turns. And so rental you, turns. You took mm-hmm. on a team. You said, yes. I'm going to have a cleaning company. And you brought in people right away and just started working I did I sure did and I was cleaning too (laughs) so it was all it was a team of four of us you're like I'm gonna do this I'm gonna do it right I'm there is no hesitation there is like okay maybe I'll start looking and if I get something then I'll like you this was it you're gonna get it done and it was going to work yeah because I had already studied everything you know I sat down all summer and I was studying 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 and it was time for me to start implementing you know so that September I started um, with the cleaning by October we started doing rental terms and I drafted my husband (laughs) and we were like painting getting these properties ready for um, their new renters and I want to say by January honestly it died down a little bit okay just because um, I don't know what was going on maybe the holidays and stuff like that but it died down and I started doing conferences February and March. That's like my conference time. And at that time in March, I went to the IBMF conference again, and I connected with the teachers there. Because again, like I said, I've been going to those conferences for years. So I understood what was going on in the conference. I understood that if I, if I wanted a government contract, I need to connect with those teachers. Because those teachers are the ones that always have the contracts. Mm. So this year, 2020 in particular, I went there with a mission. Like I know that um, they're going to have teachers there. So I'm already prepared based off of the stuff that I got from, you know, watching you guys. Like I'm already set right now. Like this is the time. (laughs) And so March of 2020, I went there and um, was it March? Yeah, it was the beginning, the end of February and the Mm -hmm. beginning of March, like the very last week of February, beginning of March, I went. Yeah, because we were still semi-normal. We had talks about COVID because I was up in DC at the Women's Chamber of Commerce conference at that same week. Yeah, so, and everything was fine. You know, they talked about COVID and stuff, but it wasn't like- We still had conferences. Right, it wasn't like the whole world was about to shut down. I would have never guessed because I people talked to them like, "What are they talking about?" Like the moms wiping down the seats of the airplane. I'm like, these people. You thought it was being dramatic. I was like, "Yeah, I thought so too." I was like, "They're just being so extra. Let's just get on this plane and go forward." (laughs) I really did. So when I got back, I would eat all of the connections. One you thing met with them. the teachers and spoke yeah. to them. I met with the teachers. Absolutely. Emailed them all. Thank them for teaching the class. And hey, by the way, this is what I do. You know, this okay. is what I do. Keep me in mind for other contracts. And um, yeah, that's it. You know. And what happened after? Then you came back and continued your business. Absolutely. So by March, um, when I went to the conference and I came back, by March 13th, I decided to change my name to ACJ Luxury Maintenance, right? And this is all the magic happened. It's so crazy. Why? um, Because I wanted something that incorporated my kids. I wanted something that started with an A because in marketing purposes, A is always at the top, you know? So ACJ made sense to me. You won't have to look for me. It's like, I'm going to be right there. 
You're gonna be first on the list because everything usually be, happens alphabetical order. Yeah, and I don't have to pay to be seen. You know, I learned that from the daycare. Like when you put your name on these listings, a lot of the times if your name starts with like a, a D or E or whatever, you're gonna have to pay for, to be seen. With the A, I'm already gonna be on the first page. So oh. that was very strategic for me, very strategic. And so I was like, okay, ACJ, and I wanted to keep luxury because I know the type of people I want to work with. Are ACJ your kids' initials? Alyssa, Chloe, and Jacob. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) When I when I saw it today, I was like, it has to mean something. Yeah, I never thought it was three kids, but it has to mean something. (laughs) Okay, so they should be loving this business. They're like, oh, mom, absolutely. Absolutely. They think it's there. <laughs> but yeah, by March 13th, I changed the name. Mm-hmm. And I want to, no, March 13th, everything shut down. March 17th, right, is when I changed the name and started ACJ Lux. <laughs> and I remember talking to my friend, I'm like, everything is shutting down. How am I going to do this business? Nobody's mm-hmm. going to want me to clean. It was crazy. But by the end of March, I got the call for my first contract that was for cleaning the VA hospitals across New York City. You're talking about Manhattan, Brooklyn, and St. Albans, Queens. And I got the call. Um, the prime contractor, which was one of the teachers there oh. at, the, at the conference, reached out to me and you know remembered my business and asked me if I would be interested in doing it. And me, I'm like, hell yeah, <laughs> like, yes. This is what I've been waiting for. <laughs> and so I, I wasn't expecting it to be as big as it was. That's one thing. I was not expecting it to be as big as it was, but it just blew up. So by so we're in the end of March, right? By April 7th was when we start the contract. Okay. But we didn't get the call that we got the contract until April 5th. They were like, okay, we want you guys to start, but we want everybody to start by April 7th. And we need 40 people by April 7th. Two days. <laughs> yes. 48 hours. <laughs> yes. And luckily I was able to, I had other people that I knew with cleaning companies that were interested and I reached out to them. I told them, listen, I have this contract, but you like to jump on board and you as the owner would be my supervisor for this site. And these would be, you know, you have your workers work at this Because how many people how were on your team? Um, at the time, it was just me and three other people. <laughs> so you're a little bit short. <laughs> yes. 30 something short. short. Yeah. Very, very short. And, you know, when I reached out to them, they didn't have as many people either. So, you know, between the other two companies, we were at like 10, to be honest with you. So I put out on Indeed and I'm calling people all types of nights like you know typically you're calling people up until five yes I was calling people at nine o'clock like hey we have a job coming and this is what it entails and you know some people turned me down because they were scared to work in the hospital Mm. you know with it being COVID but many people were like okay because it was paying so much they were like yeah I'll just you know I'm gonna put on my mask it's not your (laughs) typical janitorial housekeeping absolutely not absolutely not they were getting paid a good amount to mop and clean these hospitals it was great so um I was able to pull together the 40 people by April 7th in three different locations <laughs> three different locations and how far are the locations how do I explain from Bro- all right so if you look on the map you would think from Brooklyn to um Manhattan is not too far but New York City traffic that's mm-hmm. far but okay. the good thing is, is that, I mean, the good and bad thing is it was COVID. So, you know, there was no traffic, no traffic. on the streets. Yeah, it was no traffic. And the trains were running well, so the people were able oh, to. Oh, okay. Leave. And but how from, long was the contract for? Did you guys know about how long it's going to be? At first, it was only supposed to be up until August um, August 8th or August 7th. So it was only about four months. Okay. But then they extended it. They extended it. So we stopped in on August 7th. They called us back in September to start again in October. And that was supposed to be only up until December, but then they extended it again. So we got two extensions on that contract. 
two extensions. We didn't end, we didn't stop working until March 24th of 2021. How did you feel when you were, because I can't imagine 40 people, okay, we're 10 all together. I called the people I knew. I only have 10. I'm like, okay, I need about 30 more. And that's including me. So 30 more. How did you feel when you finally had your list of 40 people? Honestly, I, I don't remember the feeling because I was so focused on getting this contract going. You know, it was like, okay, we got it. Now what's next? Let me get them enrolled. Everything was like, a, now what's next? Now what's next? Oh, you know? okay. I didn't sit back and think about everything until that September. Like, wow, this really happened. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> this really happened. But it was, it was really tough getting the contract going. So I was like, you know, there were many days that I was, I didn't get home until sometimes three, four in the morning. Yeah, and I would be gone from seven in the morning. So, so you went out to the sites. I did, I did, because I it's my first contract. So mm-hmm. I one I I wanted to make sure the prime looked good because okay. I'm gonna see him again, and you know we all have this connection to the um the same company that we're under because he's a service disabled veteran as well, but he's also a te- a teacher, one of the teachers. So I wanted to make sure that this contract goes well so he looks good and then he refers me out to other people so my main thing was that and then next is making sure that the workers understand what they're supposed to do they understand the contract and that they are set with their tasks Mm -hmm. um so that was in and I had to learn human resources like I learned all of this stuff through all along the way payroll which almost gave me a heart attack (laughs) Because you've ran a business, you ran the daycare for eight years, and then you had already started running a cleaning business. Yeah. So, and I, I guess this because- was like big business. This wasn't, I've never had 40 workers. It, you okay, know. I'm like, what was the biggest difference between running a business and running this contract? It was having so many workers, so many different personalities to deal with. And when you go over a certain amount, amount in human resources Mm -hmm. you have to add in additional training as well you know so it's like when you hit that 40 mark I think no it was the 30 mark you have to start adding in additional training that I didn't know about training see it's not like you're just telling these people go mop these are the two rooms you have to mop tonight and this and that no no oh yeah because what I left out is they all had to do trainings as well within those two days and these people because (laughs) I had to find an online training janitorial training for them and they actually did it they actually did it oh you said five hours They were getting paid well. That's why they wanted to get it done and get paid and get on this job. That's yeah. So they had to do additional training once they got there. Mm -hmm. It was a lot. (laughs) It's just a lot of moving parts. (laughs) That's that's insane. Like, and you're going to all three locations, making sure everyone's doing it, and then having this payroll because it's not just regular payroll because you then have to do certified payroll, which I found out during my at the end of my first contract when the lady goes, "Um, just send us your certified payroll so we could start um, and your invoice." And I'm like, "What certified payroll? What is that?" Right. I'm like, huh? So that's yeah. when I had him like, um, Eric, what's certified payroll? She says I need certified payroll. And and that one's even tough because when you do your regular payroll, for my payroll, it was bi-weekly, right? Certified payroll, they want to know week by week, mm-hmm. like every week, how many hours, you know, breaking down, broken down into the amount of taxes mm-hmm. that you paid that yes. employee for that week. And I'm like, but I did this bi-weekly. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just give you a bi-weekly amount yeah. total? <laughs> so it, it is a lot. It's a certified payroll. Yeah. And even just having payroll alone is a lot. I can't. Mm-hmm. Like from, I do construction. So I do subs. So they perform a task. They get a check. And that's all I give them. Right. Like I've, right. I've never had that payroll company that it's different people and it's bi-weekly and it's by hours and the first payroll was absolute hell like I was getting calls left and right like oh this you know people have problems with the the um 
they, a lot of them were going to check cash in places. Mm. And it was just like, you don't have a bank account. You put the money in. It was just like really <laughs> insane. <laughs> you know, <laughs> This was really insane. First, but after that, it was everything. Went well. Okay, and then you understood how it flows. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So it, it was different, very so different. In September, when you finally sat back and realized it's actually happening, do you remember like a feel? You've had businesses, so it's a little different. Did you have that feeling of, wow, it actually is happening? Yeah, I did. I was really, I was extremely grateful for the opportunity and, you know, just to be able to put goals out there and it really happens, you know. Um, one of the things that I did when I was on a plane, when I came home from um, that conference that I told you about, mm -hmm. was write down 50 goals, you know. And I was on a plane, I wrote that down. And one of the goals were to get three contracts. Another goal was to hit I think 250k because I wanted to become another I wanted to be a part of this other program and it was to have um I think 20 employees that was some of the goals there and when I sat down and thought about it in September I'm like wow um one we surpassed 250k like water <laughs> and you know I had way more than uh 20 employees you know <laughs> Um, so it was good. And I already, and that was just my first contract, you know? So I felt really good to be able to hit those goals, but I um, knew that it was from, you know, relationship and networking, but it was really good. to be Yeah. Able to because hit. yours came from, it was a teacher you reached out to because mm -hmm. you went to a conference right? and you didn't just go to the conference and sit back either. You actually no. knew you had the people that you're going to target are the instructors because yes. if they're teaching a class, that means they should know how to do this because they are Absolutely. doing it. It's not like I'm going to go sit next to a person and they're lost. I'm lost. So at the end of the day, it's like, <laughs> what did we really accomplish other than exactly. the same air? And then when you needed the amount of people, you already had contact with other companies that could help out. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, it was just one of those things that was, um, everything was already set and ready to go, you know. I'm not, I know you've spoken about this in our GovCon Tuesday's call, payroll. Were you financially uh. able to have 40 <laughs> people? You went from three to 40 now. Yes. Was I financially able to do it? Absolutely not. Um, ironically, with this teacher that I had, um, I sat in his class and he, one of the things that he said was, you know, don't be afraid to tell your prime that you don't have any money. That's what he said. <laughs> he said, uh, okay. He said that. And, and I went up to him after class and I'm like, okay, you say that, but is there a proper way to say, I don't have any money? To do <laughs> and he's like, no, you have to be transparent and just let them know you don't have the money. So when he came to me, I said, Hey, I don't have any money to do this. <laughs> Just like you told me to. And I'm sure yeah. that he remembered you because of that yeah. question. Because he told everybody this, but nobody really asked anything about it. They just, okay. Yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, it humbles you when you have to go to someone and say, hey, I don't have any I want to do a million-dollar contract, but I don't have a million dollars to fund it, you mm -hmm. know? Um, so when I told him that I don't have any um, money to fund it, the only thing that I needed to come up with was the money to be able to pay for the insurances. You got to pay for your workers' comp. You have to, you know, the money to put everything in place, right? Mm -hmm. And then for payroll, he covered the payroll. So what he did was he would pay me every two weeks to make sure that I'm able to cover the payroll. And then I can pay the payroll and then I took my cut out of it as well. So I didn't have to worry about anything with that when it came to it financially. Oh, wow. So it's about telling them if you don't have the money, you don't have the money. There are some primes out there willing to fund you because they want the contract too. You know, they, and one thing I learned is, you know, when you open your mouth, you get results. <laughs> you get results. Don't sit quiet. Yeah, because easily you could have been like, oh, I just can't. And all that right. I just can't is what three words. And, and it was just like, they're just, they're not going to ask you why. Exactly. Exactly. They really are not going to ask you why. You have to let them know exactly why you can't do it. 
and be very upfront about it. Yeah, be transparent, like you said, because if yeah. you're not transparent, then at the other turn, when it comes down to it and there's an issue, then they're going to be like, but you didn't tell me this. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, my prime was the, the key component when it came to the finances for all of this. He was the key component in making sure that this deal happened. And, you know, I'm very grateful that he, you know, put his trust in my company, especially <laughs> if being new, you know, to take a chance like that was really good. Yeah, the initial call was great. But I guess when he saw that this lady pulled up 40 people in two exactly. days, notice, like, like, she if she could do that, then imagine what she can do. Yeah. And it's funny you say that because, you know, his superintendent that I worked closely with was in shock that I, he didn't think I could do it. He had like labor ready people just in case I don't have, mm -hmm. like he was in shock that I was able to pull it off. He's like, I can't believe you did this. I'm like, yeah. And in my head, I'm like, yeah, I did it. But I'm like, yeah, I can't believe you. <laughs> <Right. Like, laughs> what about your husband? How is, how did he react to all this? So he was so helpful throughout everything, you know, helping me navigate these different personalities. Because remember, I've been an entrepreneur forever, but he actually worked. So he understands the employee mindset where I'm like, this is just ridiculous, you know? So he helped me navigate it. He was very excited for the contract and it worked out good for us because in his job, he was off two weeks and on two, you know, oh. on one week. So he was able, we were able to juggle the kids that way because <laughs> remember they were being homeschooled and all of this That's stuff. That's true because you said you, they shut down the 13th and you started all this the 17th. Mm -hmm. So, so as soon as it started, he was actually off of work for two weeks. Okay. And yeah. And the weeks that I had to, that he did have to go into work and I still had to come in and we'd have like a, a babysitter or something. My neighbor will watch them down. I had a neighbor downstairs okay. and she would help out again, asking people <laughs> like, please help me. <laughs> Yeah, it's true. Asking people and we take that for granted at times. Like people say, yeah. just ask, but something in us say is like, I don't want it sound dumb. I don't want to yeah. sound like I, I'm just less by just yeah. asking something so easy. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, the worst they could say is no. That's what I always tell, my, tell myself all the time. The worst a person can say is no, mm -hmm. but that gives you the opportunity to just move on to the next, you know? Yeah. So when this contract was coming towards its end and then it got extended, for me, it would feel like I just want another contract. Yes. <laughs> How did you feel? I was excited. My guys were super excited, you know, and it was just like, let, let's keep making them happy. You know, I stress that to my, my employees all the time that we are we are all a team. So it's not just me winning, you know, mm -hmm. it's you being able to work during a pandemic and being able to make such good money during a pandemic that it's amazing you know you have a blessing here and let's make sure that we take full advantage of it you know yeah. and my employees understood it they were really like i would get emails about how grateful they are to have the job how you know and it's been years since they've been uh, been able to be this ahead in your bills and stuff so it was like really a blessing oh, you know I really is. yeah it was really a blessing so I was excited that's awesome that's that's so nice it just must be a very nice feeling that you're able to give to a community of people that mm -hmm. otherwise they would be barely making it because those type of jobs, cleaning jobs, we all think of who does the cleaning jobs, the immigrants that come over, yeah. the people that don't have. And so you never think you would be able to make anything decent. And for you to right. come in and give them, here's an opportunity, and this mm -hmm. is how much you're going to make. And for them to say, I've never, I've never been ahead on my bills. Right. Like, right. Like, remember, we're in New York City. So, <laughs> you know, it ain't cheap. <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> That, that one is hard. So I understood them, you know, and it, it was, uh, it was amazing for them. And I was very honored to be able to have the opportunity to, to, to be able to serve them in that capacity. Mm. And then it got extended again. Yes. That was just icing on the cake. <laughs> <laughs> what were you doing during all this? Because knowing that it, it might, thinking that it was going to come to an end what was where were you strategizing for the next move 
Um, so during all of this, I was just really trying to work towards obtaining another contract and seeing how, you know, I'm going to leverage this big first opportunity to be able to pitch myself to other people and get more contracts. And I was updating my SBS, the, the dynamic, mm-hmm. I can never pronounce it, but <laughs> it's a, a dynamic, dynamic small, small business profile. Bio. So I was updating that as well. And I added that on, I made sure to get my business bonding. Um, that's something that we didn't have. Mm-hmm. So I was working towards the things that I didn't really have before, you know, okay. um, now it's just getting everything so together. It's important that you are just like, oh, I got a contract. That's it. And yeah, it's like, no. <laughs> wait it out. Like, I made it. I did it. It's like you're getting yourself ready to keep those wheels going, to keep things Absolutely. coming along. Absolutely. How much was this contract for originally when you first got it? So when I first got it, they said, this was fun, funny too. He's like, you know, you could go home with a, like in your pocket, you're going to make $150,000 off of this contract in four months. He's like, you're going to make that. I said, yeah, yeah, okay. That's what you say. But I didn't believe him. <laughs> I didn't believe him at all until the first check. And I said, oh, oh. <laughs> even my husband was like, cause he didn't believe it either. And the first check came in. Um, especially with payroll and stuff like that. So the first check that did come in, it was for 119 grand. The majority of it, of course, was going to payroll, Mm -hmm. but it was the fact that I seen 119 grand (laughs) in the bank account. And I'm like, what? (sighs) Yeah. So it was just one of those things. Like, wow. But originally the, the first four months, I believe it was supposed to be for, yeah, 400000 for the first, you know, four months. That's a very and nice first contract. <laughs> tell me about it. <laughs> but all you did was ask a question to an instructor and mm-hmm. send a simple thank you email that a lot of people don't even think about doing. Yeah, a lot. Many people do not think like, about I don't even think of it. I do. You know who I do it for? My podcast guests. Oh, wow. And that's how I, I, I remember them because I do that process. And hearing you say it, it's like, maybe I should do it for so many more people. Yeah, yeah. Every instruct, every time I go to a conference and I meet instructors mm-hmm. and, and just the people that I meet with, I always say thank you. I always try to remember something that we talked about. So that way they can understand like this is personal, personable. And it's not something where it's generic, Mm -hmm. you know, and that's it. And I always get a response. I'll be like, okay, or, you know, if it's somebody in passing that I met and I I, um, sparked a conversation Mm with, I'll say something we talked about. And then I'll ask them, hey, what did you think about the conference? What was your favorite part? You know, so that I can build up that relationship with them. And when it's the instructors, I'll pick out something really good they talked about and say, thank you so much, because without this, I would not have been able to, you know, start this part of my business. So, you know, stuff like that. That's really good advice. Yeah. Yes. A lot of people go to conferences and just attend. Yeah, no, no, you have to. And I used to be one of those people, like, you know, I'm just attending, I'm collecting information. But I really got into the idea of networking, mm-hmm. because relationship building is the name of the and once I started seeing the doors that open from relationship building, like this, this contract here, you know, but even before this contract, it was other things that let me know that it's not, it, it's more about your network, your network. Who do you have in your network that can help you get to that next level? And, you know, my focus was making sure I met those people and connected with them to get to where I wanted to go. When you're getting the, the extension to the extension and you saw it <laughs> coming to its end, what was that feeling? That feeling was like, my money train is stopping. <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> oh, it was <laughs> about the sense of closure of like, you completed it. But yeah, that I would think the money too. Cause... That was my initial feeling. I'm not going to lie. But, you know, it did feel great that, again, that I had the opportunity. I send out a good thank you email to all of my employees, especially the ones that were there from the beginning to let them know they were so well appreciated. And then it was time to move on to the next contract to see what can I get and, again, how can I leverage it. 
And within a, a month, I got an, another contract, not for as big, but th and this was, this literally just fell in my lap. Right. So how did it just literally fall in your lap? Because that's what we hear con government contracts are supposed to be. You register and it just comes and falls in your lap. I'm sure it didn't just fall in your lap. It had to I be promise, a networking or something. This one wasn't. They emailed me out the blue. I believe I, I had just updated um, my dynamic service profile. Your DSVS. See, yes. you had to do something in order. Right. For okay. It there to it is. So I just updated that. <laughs> and so the contract that ended in March, April, they reached out to me, the Department of Veterans Affairs in Kentucky. And I'm in New Jersey. So this is from Kentucky. And they asked me to quote on how to strip and wax the floor. They wanted a quote on stripping and waxing the floor. The, the VA, um, the location is Kentucky though. The it's location, not like just the contracting officers. Yeah. The location was in Kentucky. And in my head, I'm like, wow. But I, I like to say yes to everything. So I said, yeah, I'll give a quote. I mean, nothing hurts from giving a quote, right? So I gave the quote and then I followed back up with them because I didn't hear anything. I said, hey, you know, I submitted the quote. I just wanted to follow up and see, you know, what did you think? Um, did you, what's the status? So he called me and he's like, well, you know, uh, do you guys do, they were looking for a specific type. They wanted to change the color of their floors and it wasn't something that I did. And it was only, there's only a certain amount of companies licensed to do it. That was something that I learned. It was, it's something called Endura Glaze, Chrome Glaze, and, there's, and they, they asked specifically for it. So I told the contractor, I said, hey, I don't do that, but I can find, I can get partners that's going to be able to do it. And that's what I did. I looked up their terminology and I found out who did it. Mind you, it, it's weird at the time I was doing it where most people won't be doing it, but my daughter was about to get surgery. And she, um, cause she had to get, it was a minor surgery. She had to get surgery on her knee. So it was one of those things where I'm at the hospital. She, she went into surgery and I'm calling people <laughs> to take my mind off of her you know, this is out. still your child going yeah. under. Yeah, I'm trying not to freak out, so I'm calling um, the contracting people there to find out if they can do it. And I found someone that's in Kentucky that was able to do it. But I, I missed the part in the story where I did reach out to Eric. Oh, <laughs> okay. He did send out an email. At which point did you reach out to him after you knew what they needed? Yes, after I knew what they needed. Okay. And, but the people that got back to me, they weren't able to, you know, do it. Um, so I, I was like, hey, let me just find someone in Kentucky. Um, and at that time, I didn't know. At that time, I when I reached out to Eric, it was only supposed to be stripping and waxing. I didn't know they wanted to change the color of the mm, Okay. You know, so um, once I learned that, I had to find the company that could do it. And I found them actually on the GSA schedule. And I called them and they um, helped me locate the company in Kentucky. And that company in Kentucky, they were amazing. And they were absolutely more than willing to do it. So I put together the quote, mm -hmm. I sent it back to the VA um, contracting officer. He accepted it. And boom, that was like a, a sole source right there, straight to me. And by May, I was in Kentucky. Oh, you did go to Kentucky. I did go to Kentucky. <laughs> Have you ever been to Kentucky before then? Not at all. Not. My whole family is like, what are you doing in Kentucky? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, out here. But Gotta make sure it's done. I had to make sure it was done. And I did. And it was good. I didn't really have to go, to be honest. They did an amazing job. But I wanted to shake the, um, the point of contact, mm. you know, hand. So that he sees that I'm there making sure everything is okay and just build up that relationship with the Kentucky point of contact. And after they were done working, I sent a follow-up email to them saying, hey, we're done. These are the pictures. I hope you like it. If you need anything, if you want us to go back and check over anything, we'll do that. You know, so, but they were, they loved the job. So How long did it take? That one was just a, two weekends. Two weeks. Two weekend. The first weekend I went out there, but the second week I didn't have to go. Yeah, it was a two weekend job. How much? 25 grand. Yeah. So you go from 1.2 1. mil, 25. It's not bad. Oh, the first one ended up in 1.2. 
So your yeah, 400 they, turned to 1.2? Yeah, 400 Oof. turned to $1.2 million. Oof. Contract, nice. I know. I know, yeah. For but this one, contract. this one has to mean a lot because it's your first prime. It's my first prime. So this one meant the most. It's me, mine. You know? Like, I, yeah, it's, it's under it was my, my name. name. Right. So, you know, now I finally can say, like, I directly work with the Department of Veterans Affairs. And that, that mm-hmm. is good because my foot is in the door now. <laughs> That's all I needed. Mm-hmm. So how do you now leverage this one? I'm going to be, well, I'm still working towards it, but I'm going to be definitely submitting more bids, building more relationships, you know. I don't have any contracts right now in the work, but I'm working towards it. And leveraging it with these two first big contracts, it really helps me to look very credible, (laughs) helps me to look financially stable. And that's one of the things that I worried about when I first started contracting, not looking financially Mm -hmm. stable. One thing I learned through being in the group is, you know, you don't have to be financially stable, but you have to partner with someone that is, right? So, you know, it's just- Someone has to pay for it, right? Somebody has to pay for it. So just making sure that I'm partnered with the right people and through the group, I was able to partner with great people. So, you know, it's it's just one of those things I'm gonna keep bidding and make sure I keep myself out there. So right now you don't have any contracts going on, but it doesn't mean that you're not taking the steps to find the next one either. Oh, absolutely not. Like what are I'm some, submitting. Is, okay, you're submitting. Cause the first time in between you made sure you updated your DSBS, you updated mm-hmm. capabilities, you updated everything. So you're not just letting those things lag. No, not, no. And you're also just not waiting for the next phone call. The first one, somebody was able to help you. Re- they reached out to you. The second one, you said it fell in your lap, but you actually did some work. You did a lot of work. <laughs> and so it's like, I tell people, it, it's hard for me just because I come from, I won my first two bids, three mm. bids when I, when I decided to do this. So yeah. now it's like, wait, now I have to work for them. So the, yeah, like I got it too easy at the beginning. Yeah, yeah, so it's, no, it's, it's different hard. when you have yeah. to work, and, and I've been submitting bids. I had, I did have another bid that um that did come through, but it didn't work out just because it was a little hard to find workers in that location, so I had to let that, that bid go, and I've submitted some other bids, you know, that I didn't win, so I've been working in between, but it's just about, you got to keep going, you know. I was going to ask you, what after getting those no's, like what makes you keep going to the next one? It's a little addicting for me. Again, like I said, I'm, I'm a serial <laughs> entrepreneur. So <laughs> and for me, this is like the no's kind of fuel me. And again, I'm a mom. So, and I just bought a house, <laughs> you know, so I'm a homeowner now. So I have to keep going. This is not like a game. You know, I, I literally have to keep going so that we can afford to do what we need to do and mm-hmm. afford the type of lifestyle that I want to have. So how just, has government contracting changed your life? Being that you just bought a home and I mean it, it changed it tremendously, you know. The the first business, like I said, it was time to move on, but it was hard times after the first business, you know, we kind of went bankrupt and it, it, it was a lot. So in this year, the past year from 2020 to 2021, when I decided to, you know, move forward on it, it was like a 360, you know, everything that I lost, I, I got back. And then some to be able to be a homeowner, to be able to travel again the way I want to, put my kids in the stuff that I want them to be a part of, it feels great, you know, and to add on that savings because my oldest child does have autism. And I want to make sure that he's able to be taken care of for the Mm -hmm. rest of his life as well. So it's just a lot of things in the pot that keeps me motivated to keep going and government contracting. I feel like not just for myself, like I told um, this other, what was it? I was applying for another company, like another um, cohort to be a part of. But like I told them for government contracting for me, it's not just about me, but I find it to be a path to give other, like my employees, a good job, a sustainable job Mm -hmm. that can help them move forward, you know, 
And that means a lot because I used to be on the community board in the Bronx and they used to always say, oh, we're, we're bringing in jobs. And I, I would be the main one raising my hand, like, are these jobs that people could live off of, <laughs> you know? Because <laughs> you're saying you're bringing in jobs, but people can't live off of that. You know? And I feel government contracting really gives people the opportunity, not just the person on top, but even the employees, mm-hmm. the opportunity to get ahead. It's and, true. And live meaningful lives. Yeah. It's very true because I look at some projects and the first thing is like, I want my people to be doing that. Right. <laughs> like, I want people to look like me, like you, to yes. be the ones doing those jobs yes. because it's yeah. hard out here. It's very yes. hard. You're from New York. I'm from South Florida. So we see the people that look like, like there are in our communities that we grew up around. Mm-hmm. Like my mom's been at the same job for 30, 33 years. She my wakes up. Too. She wakes up at three in the morning and now with COVID that there's nobody to work, it's hard to find people to work. Um, And it's like, it's, I see how much she's given and it's Mm -hmm. like, I want to be able, because everyone has, you always have to stick to your why. Like my, my why has always been, I want my mom not to have to wait to retire. I want her to enjoy herself. Absolutely. So it's like Absolutely. I want to, I want to give those people, and also the kids that are growing up that mindset. It's like, look, she, she made them. Oh, I'm gonna tell my kids tomorrow. I was on a phone call last night doing a because <laughs> they love that we're we're on YouTube. Uh, like she made over a million dollars. They're gonna be like. <gasps> I'm going to film it just for you. Oh, gosh. <laughs> but but you given these people that opportunity, I can't imagine how their lives change as well. Absolutely. Yeah. And that means the most to me as well. You know, it's not just about me, but it's really about giving that meaningful opportunity. Like, that's important. Everybody has to be able to live. Yeah. yeah. And you took that chance when you made that switch. You were married. You have three kids. Yeah. And you had the three kids and it's like, everything's shutting down around you. And you're like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to start this. And you, so I give props at everything, like in the middle of everybody's craziness and I'm single and I have the kids and I still have to think and overthink about it. And you just like, I'm going to do this. And you just did it. Like I told my, my, me and my friend, we talk and it's like, we're really lucky to still be married because we're so crazy with this (laughs) entrepreneurship thing. (laughs) Oh, she's one too? Yeah, she's just as crazy. At least our husband's still (laughs) safe. Yeah, I told my husband, I'm like, you must be crazy too. You you just hide it better than I do. Yeah, he just doesn't take the leaps. Right. (laughs) He he holds your hand through them. So he has that little bit of that rush that you get in. You need to get the 40 people when you need to go out in the middle of a pandemic and things like that. He's a part of it. (laughs) It's true. It's true. So, And it was scary. It wasn't like a very, it was scary to like go into the hospitals, you know, because we had to like clean the COVID rooms, you know, like we had to go in there and do the terminal cleanings when a, a patient would be discharged, that was our job. We had to clean out the rooms to get it ready for the next room. And in between that, um, stripping and waxing the hospital floors, like that's what we had to do and get different wings prepared and opened up for other COVID patients. So, you know, and, and one thing that was a blessing is not one person caught COVID that worked in in those areas they my guys took really good precaution really good ter- care, care of themselves mm-hmm. so it's yeah. just when you know because you guys were in the middle of it all like you yeah. were the talk before florida became the talk <laughs> right right yep yep we sure were we were the epicenter as they say yes yeah. everything and for new york to shut down new york city yeah that's a big deal <laughs> I was like, like, man, Disney and churches shut down. It must be bad. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, and church shut down, man. I was like really sad. Like, oh, I can't go to church. That was, I did not like. One of there's a church that I go to in Times Square. It's called Times Square Church. Mm. Um, That's the church I used to go to in New York. Now I go to a church called Liquid. But I've been dying for, I've still been dying for Times Square Church to open. And they're just now opening next week. Is it next week? The 12th. I don't ever know what days. But they've been shut down the whole entire time. 
since that March 13th of 2020. They're just now opening back up. Oh, wow. Yeah. I thought you guys were all back to normal. In Jersey, we are. New York, not so much. Jersey, I feel like we are, but I'm a little rebel, so... <laughs> You're ready. You'll be the first one in line. Yeah, yeah I am. <laughs> yeah, probably, but. So government in the past, what, it's been about a year and a half since, not even, mm -hmm. yeah, since you started, right? Yeah. Because we're in the middle of 2020. We're towards the end, really. It's crazy how time flies. I know. And These months are just going, going, yeah. going. You had this idea in your head and you went and set out for it. How do you feel about yourself? Like you, well, you yeah. said you blessed everybody else and everything around you, but what about you? It's, a, it's, a, it's always a weird question people ask about me. I don't think about me too much and I should more, but I'm like a natural giver. Like that's one thing that makes me happy. So, you know, when I see other people happy, I'm happy. Yeah, I haven't really, like being on this podcast, like I said, it's full circle. You know, it's just to be able to just tell my story to be able to be a part of Subcon Giants, because that was another thing. Every time I watched the podcast or all of the shows, I'm like, as soon as I get the money, I'm going to join. As soon as I, and that's what I did. <laughs> I was like, as soon as I get the money, I'm going to join. I'm going to drop the money and that's it. I'm mm -hmm. going to join because I have to invest in myself. So, you know, to How is the here, learning process? The learning process, it's good, but then it's still a lot to learn. Okay. You know, I would say if you are on your first contract, no matter how much you know, it's you still have to go through these experiences that are going to make you feel like, I don't know crap. <laughs> Everything I thought I knew, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's a chess game, you know, it's, it's, it's not only about the knowledge of the government contracting and the terminologies. It's also really knowing how to negotiate, you know, it's a chess game. How much should you give in and how much should you take? You know, it's just one of those things of playing the line. And that's one thing I had to learn on the first contract, you know, because it wasn't about me anymore. So anytime, you know, I disagreed with the, um, the chief that I might've been working with and they all were horrible, I had to realize that is it worth me telling this guy off and all of us getting fired off of this contract, <laughs> you know? <laughs> or, <sighs> or should I just smile and let it be? And the, the good thing is we were in COVID. So, you know, my facial oh. expressions, they give me away all the time. So I had on my mask, so they could never see my facial expressions. It's great. You know? <laughs> I be quiet and let it be, you know? It's, it's a learning curve. Going. Yeah, it's a learning curve. So you learned a lot this first contract. I did. I did. <laughs> I really, really did. From running the HR part to payroll and workers comp to just how I call it, the Colgate smile. Like, yes. Yeah. And you got it down pat. Yes. Oh, yeah. I, that's one thing. People said your facial expressions give you away. I'm like, yeah, but there's days that you have to act the part. And if my part is, okay. Exactly. Right. Exactly. And that's that that's all you have to do. Like I've, mm -hmm. I've learned, especially in the last few years of construction and things like that, because I cried. I was telling someone today, it's like my first few contracts, like, you, yeah, I was out there, but people don't see what you go through during those yeah. contracts. No. People didn't see when you had to bite your tongue, when you mm -hmm. had to go in house Gary, you must have been like, you're going into these rooms and you have a family back home. Mm -hmm. How yeah. when payroll came and you're like, wait, I have to do what? Like, I don't get this. Um, I, I cried over, I, I told Eric, remember when I used to cry and I cried over blue screws? Oh, so God. we needed these blue screws, the top screws. And I remember the, 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 the person installing it called me and I broke down. Like, I don't know why. And it's like, and because we were like, how you were how, overwhelmed. Yeah, how far have you come? I'm like, I know. I I cried over blue screws. I'm like, when wow. there's a solution to things. <laughs> like, I don't have to physically be there to fix it. Like, but there it's is true. a solution. Yeah. So you learn through these experiences. Like you said, it's not just sitting back and taking in the knowledge. And no, because you think no. you're ready. You might not think you're ready, but getting that first go 
it's yeah yeah and it's not easy like I'm sure for you a female in construction it's not easy you know and it's not easy being a female in facility maintenance like you come in there and many times you're hated off the back just for being a female <laughs> so you know again it's a, it's a chess game especially you in the VA like I can't imagine what these chiefs looked like same thing constructions female GC it's like they look down and they just think you're just secretary yeah. or just a yeah. runner or something I have like, one chief that refused like he refused to believe I owned the business he just would not acknowledge it he just, he, he didn't, I don't know. He would tell the prime, oh, I'm here with your employee. And like, he just, <laughs> he did this stuff all the time. And it's just like, okay, whatever. You know, after a while, it's like, I mean, I've had my days where I did tell, you know, my employees, like, listen, guys, I tried. So if I walk in this office and we all have to leave, I, I tried my best. <laughs> just know I did. <laughs> I promise you I tried. But those days, didn't come, thank God, you know, because, you know, at the end of the day, your work speaks for itself. So whether a person likes you or not, if you are a great company, and if your employees are doing what they have to do, they're not going to take that chance and, and fire you and try to get someone else because good, especially good work and government contracting is very hard to find. So they'll try to keep you as long mm -hmm. as possible. They'll get on your nerves, but they're not going to let you go because you're good you know, and you're, you have to let your work speak for itself. And that's very true because one thing Eric said, it's like the thing about government contracting is like, once you submit a bid, there is no, I'm a woman, I'm black, I'm white, right. I'm Hispanic. It's just a company submitting it. They're yeah. not looking in depth or looking at you, seeing who it is. And that's a good thing about it because, and then you go in, you do the work, they like you and you get the next one and the next one, you keep it going that way. And we have to remember also that people are people and they yeah. probably have their days too. And you don't know Absolutely. what's going on. Mm -hmm. so just okay. <laughs> absolutely I'm, 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 a, I'm gonna get that Colgate smell <laughs> and that's why with the mask sometimes I'm like I'm glad because these kids sometimes are people eat, like construction like you said oof, if there's days I'm just like mm, okay <laughs> I'll get done it sure will I can imagine with little kids you know I don't, like know, I don't know which one's worse, the little kids or the men in construction? I would say the men in construction. Because <laughs> I feel like the kids have an excuse. They're yeah, kids. they're naive. They're fine. Yeah, they're these kids. are grown men. Yeah. Like, I'm signing body. your paycheck. You don't know how many times I had to explain that to my employees. <laughs> like, do you see the name that's on the bottom? <laughs> hey, <laughs> see? We think like, that's yeah. it. Oh, wow. Well, it is great speaking to you. Any final advice for people that were or are in your similar circumstance a year and a half ago where they're ready to make that switch and have this government contracting idea tinker in their head and they're, they're mm -hmm. a little bit like undecisive or un unsure of the unknown? I guess the, the first advice I have is to take it out of your head, you know, start writing down your goals. You know, we have to write the vision, make it plain. Um, so start writing down your goals, make it known, you know, then start building out those relationships, pick up the phone, call, email, follow up and be ready when they call you. Don't be afraid to say you don't have the money to your prime and negotiate. Make sure that you get everything that you, that you deserve as a company. Don't feel undervalued because you're new you know, you come with knowledge or you wouldn't be in the field. So just make sure that you have those things together and you should be fine. Well, I think you are just fine. And we're <laughs> excited to hear about the next win that you're going to have. Because end, end of the fiscal year is here. So yeah, that's, that's what guys. I'm getting ready, getting <laughs> these emails ready to go. <laughs> I heard that in our call last night. I'm like, you know what? I should do that. I'm like, yeah. in between my like wait 20 minutes that I get to eat or breathe, yeah. like just send out a few and see what comes up. Yeah, listen, quick 10, 20,000. Hey, right anything, right I'll there. take it. A 10 grand email. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> you, we're going to coin that. It's a 10 grand email, guys. Yeah. Yeah, it's a grand email. You never know. <laughs> no, but thank you so much. 
Enjoy Thank the you. house. Enjoy the family. Happy early birthday. And we'll keep in contact. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Have a good night. Bye. Bye.